Hey gang, it's JC, and this is your Daily Dose for Friday, October 8th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. You can get us on your mobile phone. You can get archives there, archives there, Dave Murray's weather forecast, the audio on iTunes, and we're going on the air in two weeks on the Big 550 KTRS. Thank you, everybody, for the kind words. I've been deluged with email and Facebook messages, and if you sent me one, I have read it. I will try to respond to as many as I can, but we had, I mean, literally hundreds. So I'm trying to do a little catching up over the weekend. But thank you very much for the kind words. MoDOT has closed St. Louis for the entire weekend. If you're trying to get anywhere, good luck. John Lennon would have turned 70 years old tomorrow, Saturday. And you think to yourself, well, what would be the logical place for a venue, some sort of media outlet, some sort of media host of some sort to commemorate the 70th birthday of John Lennon. Well, we end up with Larry King. <laughs> I don't know what that's saying about our generation or our culture, but they're going to have a Paul and Ringo and Yoko and Olivia Harrison on Larry King tonight, Friday. You know, there's two people that to this day, if I could just get my hands around their neck, I would take care of them because they trashed John Lennon. One of them was movie critic Rex Reed out of New York. And he used to talk about the freak show, he called it, on the anniversary of John Lennon's death every year and how people go and stand outside the Dakota and sing songs and sort of hold candles and all that. And he was ridiculing those people. That's the first guy. And the second guy is Pat Robertson. When he was running for president, what was that, maybe, got to be 20 years ago now, he was actually on KMWX, and he said, well, you know, the whole uh, the whole thing can be summed up in what we're fighting against is you can hear it in the song Imagine by John Lennon. He was actually using the song, the lyrics to Imagine by John Lennon, as a model of evil as he saw it. Oh, one of these days. How much fun is this Rams situation? I mean, this is great. They're not going to the Super Bowl. They're probably not going to win more than a handful of games, maybe a few more than we thought. It's hard to say. But um, what's great about it is that at least you have something to look forward to on Sunday, which is all about the article that I wrote for St. Louis Sports Magazine a couple of months ago. Actually, last month, where I was just talking about, come on, Spags, just don't ruin the party. Just go out there, just, you know, for the last couple of years, we've been turning on the TV on Sunday or going to the Dome knowing we were going to lose and we just didn't know how. And now there's like this little flicker of anticipation, a little flicker of hope that maybe we could actually win some of these games. This is a blast right now. The Blues begin the regular season tomorrow night. Mizzou has a big game against Colorado, and I won't see either one of them because I have Dish Network. Thanks a lot, ass wipes. The umpiring in the Major League Baseball playoffs has been um, suspect. Yeah, they get 99% of the calls right, but boy, there's been some glaring errors by these umpires. I hope they clean that up. Last night, Thursday night, if you were watching David Letterman, about halfway through the show, they did a, a sketch where this preppy little rich kid in red pants and red socks uh, was sort of camped out watching the show off to the side of Dave's desk. And he's like, you guys are going to have to leave. And he had a bunch of his little preppy-looking friends with him. And he was playing a character... Uh, the son of a guy who just bought the CBS network. It was all fictional, obviously. And there was some really, really funny stuff and a lot of stuff they had to bleep out. And it was a big hit with the audience. The guy who played that spoiled little rich kid was one of my best buddies from St. Louis University High School, uh, from right here in the, uh, the right here in St. Louis. I just said that. His name is Chris Albers, and for about 16 years, he's been the monologue writer for Conan O'Brien, but he and Conan have split, and so now he's doing stuff for Dave and doing stuff for other people. But uh, Chris Albers, absolutely hilarious last night as that preppy little kid. He used to play a character called Dwight the Troubled Teen. Don't be surprised if you see that come back, although he's getting a little old to play a teen. Uh, Ryan Seacrest, he doesn't want his own show. Ryan Seacrest wants his own cable channel. He thinks he's Oprah. You've heard of the History Channel? Maybe you should name his the As Soon As Idol Goes Off The Air, You'll Be History Channel. All right, we got bits and pieces for you here today. Larry Wilcox from Chips. Officer John Baker, charged with securities fraud. 
They say he and several others were engaged in vicious, illicit kickback schemes meant to illegally generate stock sales. He rounded. He, he got rounded up by the uh, SEC, by the feds, uh, earlier this week. 14-year-old Caitlin Sanchez has been the voice of Dora the Explorer since 2007, and she is suing Nickelodeon because she says they ripped her off. Got a big lawsuit going right now. Man, you know show business is in trouble when the voice of Dora the Explorer is enga engaged in legal proceedings. Last weekend, Jessica Simpson went to the Persian Gulf to visit the troops. She was supposed to perform on board an aircraft carrier. She only sang one song, and then she puked. Source says uh, Jessica was flown to the ship via helicopter, proceeded to have three Red Bulls. Then she started to complain about the heat. It was about 90 degrees. And then she ate, and despite the fact that her doctor told her not to sing, she did anyhow. She sang one song and barfed. As it turns out, back to Conan O'Brien, who just mentioned my buddy Chris, who was his monologue writer for 16 years. You know, Max Weinberg is not going to be part of the band when Conan goes back on the air in about, well, it's got to be like three or four weeks now. Anyhow, and people are like, well, what was that? You know, they have some sort of falling out. Well, according to the story we have here today, Max was uh, talking to some uh, internet deal the other day, and he said that he's had a heart condition for two decades that was getting worse, and as soon as The Tonight Show went off the other Conan O'Brien version of The Tonight Show, he had open heart surgery, and now he's feeling much better, but he had sort of an epiphany, and he wants to be with his family. He said he's going to be absolutely watching Conan's new show. I have it on um, somewhat strong authority that that story might be greatly exaggerated. We'll see. And in, I've been talking about this for years. A couple of years ago, we were having all these drownings, Lake of the Ozarks, uh, the Merrimack River, you know, which has got that weird undertow and everything. People go out to swim, and you never see him again until they find the body three weeks later downstream. And I said, you know, shouldn't there be something built into our swimsuits? Like a little thing that you could just hit a thing and it would go and like an inflation thing would, would, would take place and you're like along the belt or something. It just seems to me it could be done. Well, an inventor has uh, created a modified bazooka that shoots a flotation device to somebody who's drowning. The thing will go about 500 feet. The only problem is you got to go to the beach with a bazooka. According to pumpkin growers this year, the big trend is to buy the ugliest pumpkin you can find. People are not interested in the perfect pumpkin anymore. They want something like, it's like this. Two-thirds of people say it's rude to use your cell phone at a restaurant, even if you're just checking texts. All right. 49-year-old Danny Lampley is a lawyer in Oxford, Mississippi. On Wednesday, he was appearing in court representing a client. Talmadge Little John is the name of the judge. He asked everyone to rise and do the Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, and Danny stood up, but he didn't he didn't say the words to the Pledge of Allegiance. The judge placed him in contempt of court and threw him in jail for five hours. You gotta love the South. Thirty-two-year-old Melissa Reed of Incline Village, Nevada, is about to get married, and on Tuesday she goes to court to uh, get her name changed, get the marriage license. And they punch in her name, and they find out that she had been kidnapped in 1984 and didn't know it. They have found the mother, and she's now in jail. That's that's a nice run-up. That's a nice prelude to the wedding, eh? For the tenth year in a row, silver is the most popular car color in North America. It's more popular than ever. 31% of the cars sold in North America this year were silver, gray, or charcoal. That's up from 25% in 2009. Black and white tied as the second most popular colors this year, 18% each. Red was third at 11%. Wouldn't you have thought there'd be a lot more red cars than 11%? Blue is fourth at 10%. And finally, green was in last place with 4%, which is interesting because in 1994, green was the most popular color at 21%. Now it has dropped to 4 That's how trendy we are in this country. A tax appeals tribunal in New York has ruled that hookers and porn cannot be claimed as tax deductions. Some uh, guy said, well, he, <laughs> he deducted $300,000 on hookers, uh, happy ending massages, porno movies, sex aids, and everything. He, he was divorced and depressed, and he said that all this stuff had a positive effect on him and that he was into the holistic approach to medicine. 
he owes all the money plus penalties. Women make more money by being 25 pounds underweight and men make more money by being borderline obese. Researcher, University of Florida studied tens of thousands of people and there is a direct connection between weight and salaries. A woman 25 pounds overweight made $13,000 less than a woman with average weight and $29,000 less than a woman 50 pounds lighter. Men who weighed 207 pounds actually averaged the highest salaries. This couple in England that together weighed 924 pounds and they said they decided to get dual gastric uh, the surgery, you know, that thing where they, uh, what do they call it, gastric uh, something, other. you know what I mean, gastric bypass surgery, because they were too fat to get it on. The mere act of sleeping next to one another broke six different beds. Now, with well, the guy's down to 322, the woman is down to 196, and they're back to going at it every chance they get, every chance they get. And finally, uh, this almost seems to be too perfect to be true, but the American Postal Workers Union was supposed to elect new officers earlier this month, but they had to push the deadline back because most of the ballots got lost in the mail. All right, Saturday Night Live this weekend, Jane Lynch from Glee is the guest host. Secretariat, the movie, I apologize. I think earlier this week I said that I had heard it was quite good. It's getting horrendous reviews, boring and just poorly made and all that sort of stuff. Um, you should see Ben Affleck's movie, The Town, and also The Social Network. Both of those are very good movies. All right, JC's Video Village. We got an uh, interview with Jamie Lee Curtis from 1998. Her dad died last week. And this a great video of Bill Clinton rehearsing a speech in the Oval Office. And he's very, very tense. And the people around him are buzzing around like crazy. And I don't believe that you will ever see anything like this again. I am not overselling this. You've got to see the Wayback Machine and Billy Bob Clinton. Old School Photo is new today. Back to 2003 for JC and the U-Man and the Stanley Cup and a former St. Louis Blues player. Go check it out. JC's Eye Candy. Hey, it's the weekend, so why, why not? Five great boob tricks. There's no uh, porn in it. There's no nudity. Five great boob tricks. Check it out on JC's Eye Candy. All right, back on Monday with the Kings of Leon getting advice from the boss. Also, the top four reasons people unfriend you at Facebook and new stats about sex over 40. Plus, we'll have a recap of the Rams game. We'll do the weekend pickup, and we'll go at it. And don't forget, we start in two weeks, Monday, October 25th, on the 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. shift on the Big 550 KTRS. Thank you again for your kind messages. That's it. JC's Daily Dose for Friday, October 8th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Redwood. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.